Hello, I'm Barbara Sahakian, Professor of Clinical Neuropsychology at the University of Cambridge. I love my job, so I'm very excited that the British Academy has given me this opportunity to talk about the research and the clinical work that neuropsychologists do. Neuropsychology is all about understanding the brain and also how it affects our cognition, which is our thinking and memory and those sorts of domains, and also how it affects our feelings and our behavior. We also work to try to understand and improve cognition, emotion regulation, and behavior in patients who have neurological disorders, such as Alzheimer's disease, or who have psychiatric disorders, such as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or who have traumatic brain injury. I was one of the first people to set up with my colleagues, psychiatrist colleagues, a memory clinic, and that was for the early detection of memory problems in the elderly. And with my psychiatry colleagues, we also went on to do clinical trials with patients with Alzheimer's disease. Some years ago, I published with my psychiatrist colleagues in The Lancet, and what we found was that some certain drugs that we use could improve attention and memory in patients with Alzheimer's disease. Now, these drugs are called the cholinesterase inhibitors, the drugs such as Aricet or Dinepazil, and they are now used within the NHS as effective treatments for the cognitive symptoms in Alzheimer's disease. However, in order to detect these early memory problems, I had to develop new tests. And one of the tests I developed was the CANTAB-PAL test. Now, CANTAB was one of the first set of tests to use touchscreen technology and to run on computers. CANTAB is now used in over 100 different countries and over 1,700 hospitals, universities, and institutes. And what the CANTAB PAL does is it studies learning and memory, because this is one of the first problems that patients with Alzheimer's disease have, even in the very earliest stages of Alzheimer's disease, which is called amnestic mild cognitive impairment, or MCI. Now, CANTAB measures episodic memory, and episodic memory is our everyday type of memory. So it's the sort of memory we use when we're trying to remember where we left our mobile phones in the house or where we left our car in a multi-story car park. In the brain, the hippocampus helps us with our episodic memory. And the hippocampus is one of the first areas in the brain to be affected in Alzheimer's disease. And that's why the cantab pal test is so sensitive. Now, I'll now have Dr. Christelle Langley demonstrate cantab pal so you can see what the test looks like. In this cantab pal test, you will see six white boxes presented on the screen. They will open in a random order, and in some of the boxes, patterns will be located. In this first demonstration, there will be two patterns in two of the boxes. You need to remember where the pattern is located in each of those boxes. If you make a mistake, the task will re-show you each of the boxes and it will help you to try and remember where that pattern was located. The task starts off very easy to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing and it becomes progressively more difficult. In addition to cantab pal there are many other CANTAB tests one of them is a test of cognitive flexibility. Cognitive flexibility is important for learning and also for decision making. And it's impaired in obsessive compulsive disorder and also in Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease. We also develop tests of attention and concentration. And these are very important for assessing and looking at treatments for young people with ADHD and also with adults with ADHD. Most psychiatric disorders such as anxiety and depression have associated cognitive problems and these cognitive problems must be fully treated so that when people go back to university or work they are successful within that environment. We also have tests of risky decision making and these are very important for assessing such things as harmful gambling or substance misuse disorders, and they can also look at whether these, there are treatments that are effective for these disorders. 
In addition, we have tests that we use with healthy people, and so we can assess psychopharmacological smart drugs to see whether these smart drugs really do make people smarter. Do they improve attention, learning, memory, and planning, and such things as that? An area that I've been working on recently is cognitive training or brain training. And that's using games to see whether we can improve learning, memory, and attention in people, both healthy adults or also in patients. And we've used these tests with patients with stroke, schizophrenia, and MCI. Two of these games, Dakota and Wizard, have been technology transferred to the games company, Peak, and also PopReach. And now they are available to download as apps for mobile phones through Apple App Store or Google Play. When I co-invented these games, I worked with a games developer, Tom Piercy, to make sure that the games are really fun and easy to use for people. One of the key games is Wizard for improving memory. And in the Wizard game, it's a bit like a Harry Potter motif, whereby you're a wizard and there's another wizard. And in order to uh, move ahead in the game, you have to remember where runes are in different chests. And if you do this well and you're successful, then you get potions or spells that you can cast at the other wizard. And so you can go on to win. And there's lots of reward along the way to winning. If you can improve patients' cognition and daily functioning, they will have a better quality of life and better well-being. Thank you for watching this talk.